Good morning, girls. It's great to be with you again. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's hidden deep within the Psalms. There are 15 Psalms that comprise what we call the Psalms of Ascent. It's kind of a song book tucked away in the middle of the Psalms. Why is it called the Psalms of Ascent? Well, these are the songs that the pilgrim Jewish people sang as they ascended up into Jerusalem for the three feasts that happened every year. They went up, and if you went to Jerusalem from any part of Israel or Judea, you had to climb up to get to it. So as they climbed up, they sang these songs from this Psalter. These are from Psalm 120 to 134. Many of these Psalms were included in our reading this week, so I thought I'd focus a little bit on them and help us to understand their purpose for our lives and how we can read them most effectively. Of course, the Psalms we read don't seem like songs. They're, first of all, they're translations from Hebrew to English, and secondly, we don't have the lyrics. It's kind of like if somebody asked you to sing, oh, I don't know, something from James Taylor, and they gave you the lyrics only in Mandarin. Be a little challenging. But we've had years and years of great Hebrew scholars who've translated these for us, and we've had musicians who've assigned some basic, um, basic uh, melodies to these songs. And these things have made up psalters. So these songs, which were sung traditionally by pilgrims on their way to Israel, are right there in the middle of our, psalm, our psalms today. And that's what we're going to talk about. Well, traveling to Jerusalem is always an exciting experience, even today. And I remember Brian and I traveling up. We were not walking. We were in a, a car. We are in a bus, actually, last time we went with a group of people from St. Andrews. And we drove through an area where there were uh, Bedouin villages and uh, some people camping, or shepherds out in, and camping and taking care of their flocks. There were some small developments, small settlements, nothing too spectacular. And suddenly we came over a rise in the hill and there it lay, Jerusalem. And we just burst into song. We couldn't help it. But the process of getting there was quite amazing. Long airplane rides, long travel through the country, and a lot of us were still very jet lagged. Imagine what it was like for the pilgrims and Jesus day. Three times a year, faithful Jews made a pilgrimage. First of all, wherever they were living, they tried to get to Jerusalem with their whole families three times a year. Sometimes they were able to, sometimes they were not. They remembered God's salvation on these journeys and at the festivals that they attended. They remembered God's salvation at the Feast of the Passover. They renewed their commitment to God's covenanted people during the Feast of Pentecost. And they celebrated God's blessings during the Feast of the Tabernacles. Three wonderful feasts that they would celebrate in Jerusalem and every Jew attempted to do this. During their journeys to Jerusalem, they climbed higher and higher as they sang some traveling songs. This was their songbook of pilgrimage. These were the songs they sang as they passed in their daily lives of faithfulness to go on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Picture with me groups of families. Perhaps there's some farmers and herders, there's some city dwellers, some craftsmen, but they're all together and they meet up in caravan as they funnel toward Jerusalem. And as they meet, they may have different ages, different backgrounds and different experiences, but they have one songbook and they sing together as they travel. Now, I grew up in a family that sang a lot, especially when we were traveling. Every long car ride, and there were many, was accompanied by a litany of songs usually show tunes that my dad liked. At Christmas time, we'd sing carols or hymns, and this time of year, we always sang the classic Over the Meadow and Through the Woods to Grandmother's House We Go. 
These songs did more than help us pass time and keep my brothers from poking each other. Well, they didn't actually keep them, but they slowed them down a little. But they actually focused us together as a group on doing something together, singing, and going to a new place, which was our destination. In many ways, the songs that we have are songs God uses to prepare his people, to keep us from poking each other, perhaps, to teach us to sing together and to be prepared for our destination. We only need to look at Psalms 120 to 134 to see his purposes in preparing us. Now we know in Luke 2, chapter 41 and 42, that Jesus was one of the pilgrims who traveled from Nazareth to Galilee, at, in Galilee, into Jerusalem on pilgrimage as a young boy. We also know that there are many times he took his disciples on the road to Jerusalem to pilgrimage. Good morning, girls. It's great to be with you again. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's hidden deep within the Psalms. There are 15 psalms that comprise what we call the psalms of a deeper voice, maybe a tenor, maybe a baritone. We don't know, but it was beautiful singing these songs. If we can learn to sing them in our hearts and in our minds, they will also bless us as a community as we go through our pilgrimage together. Now, one of the great devotional books that's been written in our lifetime, or at least in mine, is Eugene Peterson's A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. It's a classic, and it's written about just these songs. And if you want to go any deeper into the study of the Psalms of Ascent, I recommend it highly. But he starts his book with a quote from Friedrich Nietzsche. I'd like to read it to you today. The essential thing in heaven and earth is that there should be a long obedience in the same direction. There, thereby results, and has always resulted in the long run, something which has made life worth living. A long obedience in the same direction. Our instant society pre pre prejudices, uh, prejudices us towards expecting quick results, easy results. We should grow to be more like Jesus overnight, wake up holy or something. But growing in the Lord is actually a consistent, strong, laborious sometimes process. It's not overnight and it doesn't, it's not without effort. There is effort put in, in partnership with the Holy Spirit in our growth. Our life as Jesus followers isn't a moment in time. It's not that for us, we're not static people. We don't arrive, but we're constantly growing. We arrive only when we are united with Christ in heaven. We haven't arrived at perfection, but we are on a journey and we're not residents of this earth, but we're pilgrims traveling toward an eternal home. Now there is a difference between pilgrims and tourists. A tourist travels through a land observing remaining detached, somewhat entertained, and diverted from real life. The journey is not intended to change the tourist in any way, or at least any substantial way. And the guide isn't that important. It's just in your life for a brief period of time and is gone. You may forget his or her name. But a pilgrim is someone who's journeying toward a specific destination that destination being God, on a pathway, engaging on the way with the true guide, Jesus Christ. And yes, this guide matters. Jesus Christ assists us as our guide on a transformational experience. And this experience is called in Christian Christianese or Christian language, discipleship. Christianity today has too many tourists jumping from one religious experience to another, one celebrity preacher to another, one fancy event, 
a, a retreat or a, a musical gathering to another. There's something about slowing down through COVID that forces us to pull away from the celebrity cult of Christianity, to stop to think about actually having some evidence of the sanctifying work of God in our lives. That is when we turn from being tourists to being pilgrims. God wants more for us. He wants pilgrims, not tourists. Good morning, girls. It's great to be with you again. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's hidden deep within the Psalms. There are 15 Psalms that comprise what we call the Psalms of Ascent. It's kind of a song book tucked away in the middle of the Psalms. Why is it called the Psalms of Ascent? Well, these are the songs that the pilgrim Jewish people sang as they trip for self-gain. They were called adventurers and for sailors, they left to, to journey to America. They left originally from Holland and then England. They departed on the ship, the Mayflower, and they arrived eventually in Plymouth, Massachusetts. They were called pilgrims because they were motivated to find and to build a community where they could live as faithful pilgrims. Not as people who'd arrived, but people who were on a journey together. It was to be like Jerusalem. In fact, they called it a city on a hill, like Jerusalem, drawing all men and women toward God. They didn't view themselves or the Americas as final destinations. Plymouth Rock was not the rock upon which they built their lives. Like the pilgrims, we are called indeed to build our lives on the rock of Jesus and to set our eyes past the horizon to steadfastly endeavor to become more like Christ in our everyday life. Now, when they arrived, these pilgrims on American soil, they bought with, brought with themselves the Geneva Bible, which was the translation that they used. It pre predates the King James by a, about 50 years. And they brought their songbook, their Psalter. The Psalter was indeed that, a collection of psalms that had been put to a kind of a metrical um, format so that they could be sung with some very simple tunes. They didn't have songbooks from words outside of scripture. All their words were grounded in scripture and in fact were from the psalms. They brought this Psalter with them, an English translation of Hebrew. And this is what they sang as they prepared to leave while they were on the boat and certainly when they gathered for worship. How did these Psalms help them, help them on their way? It formed them into a people, it grounded them in God's word, and it kept them on the path. So if we look at the Psalter that's hidden, the section specifically, the Psalms of Ascent, that is hidden within our Bible, some of which we read to this week, how can those Psalms, those specific Psalms, help us on our way? They have many different themes, you've noticed. Sometimes they talk about worship. Sometimes they talk about repentance or commitment or, or joy or humility. There's themes within them, sometimes more than one in each psalm. But these are all themes that we need to concentrate on in our lives. They're common themes that help to orient us and unite us around our journey toward God. As we read the Psalms, we have the opportunity to grow in the way of Christian discipleship. Now, I'm going to suggest you to this week that you pick one or two Psalms of Ascent, some one of the Psalms from Psalm 120 to 134, and look at them through the eyes of a pilgrim. Ask yourself some questions, and I'm gonna put these questions on a separate slide that you will see. You can stop the recording, and you can write these down if you wish, or just memorize them. These are the questions I want you to ask yourself as you look at these Psalms. Number one, how does this Psalm speak to my everyday condition as a follower of Jesus? Two, where does it challenge me to walk closer to him? 
Three, what does it say to me that is different from what the world, my friends, media, or family are saying to me? And four, how will I walk differently today because of this psalm? I encourage you to write those questions down, have them at hand when you read one of these psalms and to prayerfully answer those questions. I think you'll find this really helpful, a helpful discipline, especially this week. And finally, I want you to picture yourself. Again, close your eyes if you need to. You're on the road up to Jerusalem. Now remember, you're not alone. You've got traveling companions all around you. And the songs that you're singing together on the road are familiar songs. They're shared songs. You may have stopped by the side of the road because you're weary from your journey. Perhaps these songs will invigorate you, encourage you to rise up and join the other pilgrims journeying toward Jerusalem. Maybe they will point you back to the correct path after you've taken a detour. Maybe they'll leave you longing to arrive at your final destination. Maybe they're just the kick in the pants you need to get moving again. These are the Psalms that I'm encouraging you to read, the Songs of Ascent this week. I hope you have a very blessed Thanksgiving, Pilgrim Sisters, and that you continue on that journey together with those around us as we become more like Jesus. God bless you. I love you and I pray for you.